Wait till you see that sunshine day. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't it be fine? is yet to come, come the day of mine. There's a reason why I wanted that song to play. <laughs> I was going to read a speech, but some of you know me only too well. I had a chance encounter tonight in the elevator with Yuko. And Gwen White had said earlier tonight about you never know who you're going to meet and what kind of impression they're going to make on you and where it's going to take you or where it's going to lead you. And I had met Yuko earlier this weekend. We had a few words of exchange. But in that elevator, we were talking about tonight's banquet. And I said, are you having a good time? And he said, it's a good banquet. I said, yeah. I said, wait. Do you remember what you said to me? The best is yet to come. <laughs> and right then and there, at that exact moment, I realized something. I needed to tell you how I felt from my heart not from a speech. So thank you, Yuko, for making me realize what you all mean to me. Some of you remember in 2013, I was the communicator of achievement. And I never, never in a million years expected to get that. And I felt so much love from this organization during that conference. My husband was with me. I was the first trip he had made since his brain surgery. I will never forget how you made me feel that day. But I have to tell you, tonight, the best is yet to come. We're in this together. We've celebrated so much this weekend, not just 80 years. Last night we celebrated our first male COA in 60-year history. We celebrated Angela Smith and her her sizzle, you rock it, girl. <laughs> we celebrated the achievements of our high school contest winners and the bright future that they have. And tonight we celebrate your achievements and your talents in the professional contest. Now, I can't tell you what's going to happen in the next two years. I don't have a magic ball, I don't, I don't have any connections, but I can tell you this, together we can do anything. We are better together than separate and apart. When I think of Helen Miller Malik, who also happened to be from Illinois, <coughs> and what her vision must have been. I am quite certain from all the research I've done about her, she had no idea what 80 years would look like. I think she would be very happy. I think she would be very pleased. And for me, this is a tremendous honor And just as Gwen was saying earlier, there are people who help you along the way. 
So I have to say first to my affiliate, the Illinois Women's Press Association, thank you, thank you, and thank you again for the support you've given me. Cecilia Green, you were the first person I ever met at any of these organizations. And it was because of you I signed up and I entered my very first story into the contest. It was because of you. And then I met Marlene Cook and what could I do, right? How could you, how could you not fall in love with Marlene Cook? And then I served as president for two terms of IWPA. And I met Becky Sawarte. And I knew the day I met her that she was going to be the president of IWPA one day because she was that sharp. She was that talented. But more importantly, she was that strong. And then I came to conference, actually before conference, I have to back up. It was because of IWPA Meg Hunt came to Chicago, and we had lunch with her. And I had the privilege of sitting next to her. And she leaned over and she said, you know, you ought to come to conference. It's going to be in Richmond, Virginia. You'll have a good time. <laughs> and it was because of Meg Hunt I went to my first national con conference. And I had a good time. And I was introduced to the wonderful world of National Federation of Press Women up close and personal. Then there was this fabulous conference in Texas. And Cynthia Price wanted to talk to me. She wanted to get me on the board. And she wanted to talk to me over a cocktail. And do you remember what I said to you? Yes, you wanted to do it over coffee so you'd be sober. <laughs> <laughs> How did that work out for you? <laughs> I wanted to know what I was getting myself into. And what she asked, and how she asked, I said yes. So, there you go. You two right there. <laughs> I have to tell you, I am Deeply moved. I'm so proud to serve as your president now. Like I said, I don't know what's going to happen in the next two years. But I do know this. We are the National Federation of Press Women. We have 80 years of history and tradition. We support the First Amendment. We will make our voices heard. We will help each other. If anybody in here needs a, a mentor, a hand to help you, you've got a room full right here, reach out. I hope you made friends this weekend with people you've never spoken to before. But don't be shy, because this is our organization. Every one of you is extremely talented. Think of the possibilities. Think of your vision. Not my vision. Your vision for NFPW. Because that's what's going to matter. We're going to do it together. I promise you, I will work as hard as I can to take you wherever you want to go. You just got to work with me. I have to hear your voices. Don't be shy. I have to hear your voices. I have to know how you feel. I have to know what you want. But I can't do it alone. I need everybody in this room. Push up your sleeves. Take your pen to your paper. Start tapping those keys on the computer. This organization is you. It's not me. It's you and me.
together. Thank you so much.